If you're a flight simmer and you've ever wondered where you can get winds aloft and international winds aloft, stick around. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you what all the charts mean. Winds aloft can be used at many sources, but I use aviationweather.gov. If you're disappointed and thinking this is just for North America, it's not. Just wait. I've got everybody covered. To get winds aloft, click on forecast, click winds and temps. And we have wind and temperature plots and wind and temperature data. We're going to get into both of those. We're going to start with winds and temperature data. Click the region you want. It'll bring up a screen like this. We can see altitudes at the top, 3, 6,000, 9,000, etc., and locations along the left side. For this example, we're going to use Atlanta, ATL. So the winds at Atlanta are 0114. That doesn't really look like anything, but that really means 010 at 14 knots. At 6,000, the winds are 280 at 13 knots, temperature plus 3. And that temperature is in Celsius. And if you're wondering why there's no temperature at the 3,000 foot level, the elevation of Atlanta is around 1,000. When the reporting station is within 2,500 feet of the altitude given, they do not give temperature. And if we look on over to the right, at 24,000 feet, winds are 260, 260 degrees, so almost straight out of the west, at 93 knots, temperature minus 27 degrees Celsius. And moving along, at 30,000 feet, the winds are 760 at 9 knots. That's not right, and it's not. That's a special code to tell us something. When you see a number larger than 360 degrees, subtract 50 from 76 in this case. So that would be 26 or 260 degrees. And when you see that large number, that indicates the winds are stronger than 100 knots. So it would be 260 at 109 knots. Another thing you'll notice, the last two digits, 39. There's no minus sign at 24,000 feet. The temperature was minus 27 at 30. There's no way it went to plus 39, and it didn't. If you look up here, temperatures are negative above 24,000 feet. So that's minus 39 degrees Celsius. And then at 39,000 feet, subtract 50. The winds would be 260 at 111, temperature minus 53. These winds are all true north, not magnetic north. And winds that are less than 5 knots or light and variable will be expressed by 9900. And winds over 200 knots would be indicated like this, which would be 199. So when you see that, that means they could be stronger than 200. And it does happen. I've been flying jets at the time I recorded this video for a little over 15 years. I've seen that one time. We actually had a 211 knot tailwind. And in the descent, we had a ground speed of over 700 knots. And from that same page up on the top, if you click the high button, you'll get the winds for 45,000 and 53,000 feet. This is the same region as we saw previously, but there are fewer locations. Not all locations give winds aloft at 45,000 and 53,000 feet. And one more thing on these charts, then we're done with them. Earlier I said temperatures weren't given when they were within 2,500 feet of the station elevation. And wind direction and speed are not given when they are within 1,500 feet of the station elevation. Here you'll notice ALS, Alamosa, Colorado, elevation 7,540 feet. The difference from 9,000 feet is 1,460. So because it's within 1,500 feet, no report is given. Next, we have winds and temperature plots. These are much easier to read, but not as precise. Here you want to make sure plot is selected to wind speed. Then you can scroll up and down through vertical levels. Look at all the missing wind readouts between 3 and 6,000 feet. Remember what we said about wind readouts not being given when the altitude is within 1,500 feet of the station? The levels or the altitudes up to 18,000 feet go by 3,000 feet. Above that, they go by 6,000 foot intervals up to 48,000 feet. The strongest winds are usually between 30 and 40,000 feet. Once you get above 40,000 feet, the winds tend to be weaker. And each of these black wind barbs means something as far as speed is concerned, but also down below that, we can see the color coded bar and that also gives us indication of speed based on color. 
and on over to the right you see time you can actually select time in Zulu you can actually select the date and you can see forecasted winds aloft at different altitudes out many days in advance so here we have a graphical winds aloft chart at 36,000 feet and a minute ago I said all these barbs or these little black feather looking symbols mean something and they do so for example we can see the barb up here to the top right there's a long barb and a short barb the long ones are 10 the short ones are 5 knots so that would be 15 knots the one over here has three long barbs so that would be 30 knots here we have one that looks like a pennant all by itself that's 50 knots of wind here we have a symbol with two pennants each is 50 so that's 100 and then a long and a short barb that would be 115 knots and if you want to get technical they're actually called full barbs and half barbs a full barb is 10 knots a half barb is five knots and to be technical again pennants is what I call them but they're actually called flags so when you see the triangular shape that's actually a flag the flag is 50 knots so like in this example up here to the right you have three flags that is 150 knots so the winds would be out of the west at 150 knots so that brings us to our next subject the direction we talked about the speed now the direction think of these wind vector barbs as arrows the feathers on the back of the arrow would be the wind speed the front of it would be the tip of the arrow that's the direction the wind is blowing so if you were flying from central Texas out to Virginia you would have a pretty much a direct tailwind so in that example the winds would be out of 250 to 260 degrees so if you turned and looked at 250 degrees the wind would be blowing directly into your face but if you went up here to the Pacific Northwest and you were in this location the wind would be out of the northwest at 10 knots now for international winds click on tools and go to flight folder from here you can get winds for the Americas North and South America Europe Africa Asia Pacific North Atlantic so if you want to do a flight from New York to Ireland you can get the winds for the North Atlantic and I've clicked on North Atlantic and you can see we have winds from flight level 050 or 5,000 feet all the way up to 63,000 feet and there's also wind forecasts out to 36 hours so you can click on GIF or PDF I chose GIF and it looks like this so you can see here you have the United States on the left side of the screen and Europe on the right side so you'll notice these are spread out a little bit more but over the eastern seaboard of the United States we have winds at 130 knots and the temperature is minus 54 these numbers are negatives unless otherwise noted and here we've got the same region we'll select another one we'll go to flyable 100 or 10,000 feet and you can see the winds are a lot weaker and they're out of several different directions versus the higher altitude we're generally out of the same direction and that's pretty much all there is to winds aloft so you can get winds aloft in the United States and elsewhere in the world just a few tips and tricks and jet airplanes normally go into the west uh, the airplanes I fly will go above 40,000 feet they actually go to 45,000 feet I will try to go above 40 when I can to get weaker winds not always but most of the time the winds are weaker above 40,000 feet they'll start to die down and they'll be weaker at lower altitudes but if you're flying into a headwind and you decide to take a lower altitude a lot of times you'll have a higher fuel flow so you will end up burning more fuel at a lower altitude even though there is less wind and another thing that can be done with a tailwind fly at a slower true airspeed and save even more fuel and extend the range another consideration for smaller aircraft that are not approved for known icing conditions is the freezing level let's say you're flying from Atlanta to Atlantic City New Jersey and let's say at 9,000 feet there's a 60 knot tailwind and for simplicity let's say we check the weather at a location in the middle of that route and it's 8 degrees Celsius 
The thing to consider here, the temperature drops approximately 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 foot of altitude gain. If the temperature is 8 degrees, the freezing level would be 4,000 feet. And that would be the freezing level above the ground. At this location, the elevation is approximately 1,000 feet, so the freezing level would be 5,000 feet. So that would be the highest you would be able to go without encountering ice if you're in clouds or precipitation. So those are Winds Aloft in a nutshell. If you like these videos, be sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check the description for links to the Winds Aloft websites.